7,000 islands. White sand beaches, crystal clear lagoons, and kaleidoscopic coral reefs. Inch for inch, the greatest diversity of life on the planet. This is the Philippines. It's like God gave us paradise. We're island ecosystems with mountains and, and forests and, and volcanoes, and just the most beautiful people. Yeah, and, and rivers and streams where you can drink the water. Hidden under these exalted green canopies are gold, copper, and nickel, the glittering metals sought by the nation's $200 billion mining industry. To get to tiny amounts of ore, companies dynamite huge areas. The explosions release toxic dust and harmful chemicals leak into rock and groundwater. Left behind, a huge pit of contaminated water, dangerous for centuries. Red rivers bleed from the mountain mines, poisoning the oceans. And the people. 70% of the population there have mercury poisoning. And then that mercury has gone to the, to, to the river and has gone to the bay. And where are the owners? Then what? Few dare to challenge the Philippines mining industry until 2016, when the surprise appointment of Gina Lopez to head the country's Department of Environment and Natural Resources sends ripples around the world. The moment you mine here, that is never, ever, ever, ever the right choice for an island ecosystem in a geohazard zone. Mindanao's Red Mountain is the largest iron deposit in the country. It looms over the small fishing village of Ayoke, where mining runoff finds its way into the fisher folk's daily catch. These farmers and fisher folk asked to not be identified. Yung kasama namin nakapunta sa Maynila kasi ano yung trip inahanap siya ng taga Minahan. Because of poverty that they give into the bribes, it's because of poverty that they give into the mining, it's because of poverty that they cut the trees. The problem with the mining is 95% of the money goes out of the local economy. And so allow me to... I don't disagree with you there. Native islanders see their natural resources decline, but get little benefit. Many move to the cities for jobs and schools. Area development is when you take each area and you develop the potential of that area for the people of that area. Just months into her tenure as environment secretary, Lopez takes the unprecedented step of banning all open pit mining in the Philippines. If I didn't ban open pit mining, if I didn't withdraw the 75 MPSAs inside watersheds, I had lost the opportunity to make a difference. The group also alleged Lopez did not follow due process in her decision to close down 23 mining companies and cancel the contract of 75 others. But Lopez stood firm and clarified those recommended to be closed down are companies who have not complied with the requirements of the law. It takes 10 months for the Philippines Congress to take an official vote on her appointment as Environment Secretary. The chairman of the Commission on Appointments belongs to a mining family, and on, on top of that, uh, mining money funds political campaigns. It was a long eight hours for DNR Secretary Gina Lopez as she faced oppositors, one of them the Chamber of Mines of the Philippines. Recent events have shown that we are dealing with someone who does not believe in the Constitution's mandate 
for the state to undertake the exploration and utilization of natural resources. Ms. Regina Paz Lao Lopez is disapproved. Hmm. It is the constitutional right of every Filipino to a clean and healthy environment. And that is premier above all. And it is the duty, the duty of government to grant our people this right. I, I, I would do everything again without batting an eyelash. I really don't see how the country will move forward and realize its potential if we don't commit to the nurturance of these resources. No? Then if they don't do it, we should certainly do it in the grassroots and push the politicians. <laughs> At the end of the day, they, their political power comes from the grassroots. No? The densest city in the world, Metro Manila. Here, the waterways aren't silted by mining, but choked by trash and sewage. Along the crowded tributaries of the Pasig River, people who have fled the provinces huddle in the city's veins. She's from the province, Bicol. Her husband only earns $2 a day. The government should have arranged it in the island so they don't have to come here. The grassroots group Lopez helped assemble, River Warriors, works up and down the Pasig watershed. There was no river. Creating parks and river walks and bringing this ancient tidal estuary back from the dead. And the reason why this is the way it is and hasn't died after so many years is because of the River Warriors. Yes. The thing with the Filipino is that it's a colonial mentality which, which, which gets ingrained when you've been told you're second class for 500 years. <laughs> but if you feel small, if you think you're small, you will dream small, you will do small. This is what I hope, that this whole place here will look like a garden. This bay will be clean because, because people have worked together. For outstanding island environmental achievement, the 2017 Seacology Prize is awarded to Gina Lopez from the Philippines.